Hi, I'm Dr. Altman. I'm here with Daryl Levy from Toronto, Canada, who's a student here at SUNY Oswego and was part of last year's NCAA National Championship hockey team. Uh, Daryl's going to do a little bit of acceleration for me. All right, let's do that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, let's look at the data. We travel a distance between blue line to blue line of 15 meters, and we do so in a time of 3.06 seconds. Now, we started with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second, and in order to do this problem, we really got to make an assumption, and that's basically that on a velocity time graph, we start at zero velocity. We accelerate uniformly until we reach some final velocity in a period of time. And we know the time is uh, 3.06 seconds. We also know the distance, the area under a velocity time graph is the distance traveled. And we know that this distance is in fact 15 meters. And there's a lot of techniques we could apply to try to find out the information we're asking. We're looking for average velocity. We want to know final velocity, change in velocity, and finally acceleration. Well, average velocity is easy. It's simply distance divided by time. 15 meters divided by 3.06 seconds gives us an average velocity of 4.9 meters per second. Well, final velocity, uh, average velocity is velocity initial plus velocity final divided by 2. So 2 times average velocity uh, is equal to velocity initial plus velocity final. Velocity initial is 0, so 2 times average velocity is equal to velocity final. So that gives us a final velocity of 9.8 meters per second. Now if you didn't follow my argument here, you need to sit down with your notebook and work it out again. Listen to it, pause it, go over it a couple of times. Change in velocity is easy. Change in velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial, and velocity initial once again is zero, so change in velocity is also velocity final, 9.8 meters per second again. And finally, acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time. Change in velocity divided by time. So it's 9.8 meters per second divided by 3.06 seconds. And that turns into about 3.2 meters per second per second or 3.2 meters per second squared. And that finds the information we need. Now that makes the assumption that he accelerates uniformly for the entire distance. What is very likely happening is that he's accelerating and then he's reaching some final velocity. And so he doesn't really get up to 9.8 meters per second, but we really don't have the equipment in this experiment to measure um, his velocity. Uh, at all these points. And that's how you would get better data. You would record his velocity at a bunch of different locations and see if he accelerates for the first part and then starts to uh, reach a point and not accelerate for a second part. And then you could find his actual rate of acceleration through each individual thing. Some kind of hockey camp they would work on things like that. Here, we just had fun. Hope you did too.